So welcome back guys to another video on Kids Coding Playground. So today we'll be doing a scrolling platformer. After a while of hard work, we finally pulled off the scrolling platformer, ready for you guys to learn. We got some of these ideas from Groove Patch. You guys probably know him from Scratch. He made some very famous games and he's also a Scratch YouTuber. Please subscribe to his channel if you haven't already in the link in the description. And today we'll be learning these following concepts. We'll be learning custom blocks, the scrolling physics for the scrolling platformer, clones, friction, like when you move forward, it'll have like friction on the player and collision with platforms and traps. Some of these we will not be doing today because we, today we'll just be setting up variables and sprites. Next, we would like to give some shout outs to some people. So, Sergi Hakyobin uh, gave us some sprites from this uh, this uh, website right here. We used the sprites to for this project. We used the Game Maker Studio 2 to uh, cut out the sprites. And we used some of the sprites for our platformer right here. And then 11 plus preparations suggested us to do a scrolling platformer. So here we are making the scrolling platformer. So now I will sh demo the game for you guys. So we have some music. So there's Y scrolling and X scrolling. You collect the fruits. Uh, you avoid all the spikes. And if you hit the spikes, you blink and you go back to the beginning and all the fruits are there again. And in order to uh, go to the next level, you must use, you must collect all the fruits. And once you hit the portal, you go inside the portal. And there's a timer right here. And you can just wall jump. You can also wall jump. You can, you can wall jump. So you can see, you can wall jump. Collect the fruits. Just go into the portal. There's a timer. This tells you what level you're on. Uh, I'll try to complete this as fast as I can so I can show you what happens when you win. This part's the hardest part. Got it. Okay. So, when you win, it'll stop the timer and it'll say you win. It'll still let you walk around. Give you like some freedom to walk around. But, that's it. We have, that's all the game we have. So now, let's start a new project. We will start on the game. We only have three levels for our game, but that's not all. You guys can make your own levels after learning how to make it from us. Uh, we only did three levels because uh, we don't want to make the videos way too long. So next, let's get onto the code. So first, we have to make some variables. We can delete the my variable. Before I can continue, I would like to tell you guys to like, share, and subscribe. And now let's make some variables. So in Griff Patch's video, he capitalized all the all the variables that um, were global, not like just for this sprite only. So for all sprites, he would like capitalize the name of the variable. So I'm gonna do that to cause less confusion. So we're going to make some variables. We'll need collected. So put this in all caps, collected, for all sprites. This is like the, the amount of collected um, collectibles or the fruits. Then we need collected max. So this is just to say the maximum amount of uh, fruits you can collect. Now let's get another one called exit. And remember, all the variables that are capital are for all sprites. Now we can make uh, another one called in air. This is for this sprite only, so we, we can just delete this sprite and we will draw our sprite. So we have we have the sprite in our backpack already, but we will show you guys how to draw it. So we're gonna go in here, create a new costume. And we'll draw it for you guys. So first we need to get the 
Uh, so you see there's uh, two rectangles and four circles. So that's how we draw like the curved edges. There's a circle. So let's draw the squares. So you want to draw them not too fat. You need them kind of thin squares. And next you want to get no outline. And you can just copy paste the square rectangle you did from before and hold down shift and rotate. And center your sprite. Center both of the uh, rectangles. And next you want to get the circle tool, hold down shift. And you want to scale the circle perfectly like that. It's not completely perfect. You can select it, move it back a little, or use the arrow key. It's not perfect enough. Uh, a little bit more to the, I think that should be a little bit more to the right. Uh, that's perfect. That looks pretty rounded out. So you can just copy paste it and try to proportion it correctly for all the other sides as well. I'll move it to the left a little bit. As you can see, that looks pretty much all round. And you can just hold down shift to select both of the circles and you can move it down. I'll use the arrow keys and boom, you got your, it's a little bit off, but I can move it up a little. Yeah, so that's pretty much a rounded square. That looks pretty nice, actually. So now we can draw in the eyes. So we use a line with a thickness of 25. So we have a, a black line with a thickness of 25. And we just hold down the shift key so then we get a straight line. And then we draw another line. I think I kind of messed up right there. Uh, let's try that. Let's try 15. Let's rescale to 20 because I actually kind of messed up there. Our square is a little smaller compared to the other square we have. So I'm trying to rescale it. Like, as you can see, it's a little smaller. So I'm doing 20 size now. You gotta move it a little bit. So yeah, and then you draw two white circles for the pupils. Just get circle tool, get the white. Just saturation to zero and brightness to 100. Hold, oh yeah, and we forgot to fill it. We were supposed to fill it. And now let's try again. Delete, I'll delete the circle. Okay, just draw, hold down shift and draw a small circle, no outline, sorry about that. So we just draw a kind of small circle, delete that circle again. Just draw a small circle, hold down shift, so we get a perfect circle. We can copy paste that. And there you go, you got your square. So try to draw it like that. You guys can pause the video to copy it down if you want. I'm gonna delete this one now, because we don't need it anymore. So let's go continue on making our variables. So we already have some variables from the last thing. I had these variables because I dragged it in from my backpack. So I already have some pre-loaded variables, so that's kind of nice. So I'll give you some time to copy that down. So you guys can um, just copy these down. We'll need these later, but we won't need them now. And remember, all the uh, lowercase ones are for this sprite only. So you have to set all the lowercase ones for this sprite only and the uppercase all cap ones are for uh, all sprites global. So next we will make some more variables. So let's make the level 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 variable for all sprites because it's all uppercase. Mouse. So the mouse variable is to tell where the um, mouse is. So when you press, so uh, Griff Patch did a video on this. On a scrolling platform, when you press M, it will find the X and Y position of your mouse. So this is good for 
uh, putting where you want your collectibles and where you want your um, platforms to be. So next we want to make another variable called player dying. This is for all sprites and player dying we'll need that later when we have traps and spikes. We won't need that now. Let's make another variable called scroll x. Scroll x. So this is the scrolling for the x position. And this will need scroll y, of course. So this is a y scrolling position. And then we'll need one more variable called timer. This is just the time how long you can speed run or play the level. So timer. So those are all the variables we will need. And we will also need a blank sprite. So in Griff Patch's one of his tutorial, he taught that um, making a blank sprite will actually help you run the game faster because it actually takes time for Scratch to draw yellow border around the code when you play the game. So this will actually make the game a little more smoother. And next, we can set up our um, sprites. We need the code for our sprites, so let's go to the player. We will be um, putting in the platforms in the next video. Right now, we're running low on time, so let's just get onto the code for the player, just like the setting up code. So we're gonna make a block called game on in the beginning. This is just to start the game. Uh, so game on, we wanna reset all our variables. So we wanna set our X to zero, set that Y to zero, Y to zero. And you want to set the SY, which is the speed Y to zero. Set the in air, in air to zero. In air is if the character's in the air, the player, to zero. And then we want to duplicate this. Then we can set the speed X to zero as well. And then next we can set the exit to blank. So exit is if the player has touched the um, uh, portal, we'll need that later. And exit to tell if the player is dead. We'll need to set scroll X to zero and same with scroll Y. And I'm gonna move the SX up here so I can put the XS, SX and XY together. So in the beginning, we wanna set the size to 50%. So my character is already up 50%, but if you haven't just set it to 50%, set the ghost effect to zero, because when you touch the portal, it kind of ghost effects away, so we want to set it back to zero. We want to show in the beginning. So um, at one point, when you die, it'll start blinking and hide and show. We don't want it to like get messed up, so we always want it to show in the beginning. We want to get it when flag clicked. In the beginning, we want to set the level to 1. We'll talk about the levels later. We will not need that right now. Just set it to 1 in the beginning because we always want to start in level 1. We want to show the variable level because at the end, when you win, I hid the variable level. So in the beginning, you always want to show it. Set the timer to 0 in the beginning. Timer to 0. And you want to broadcast and wait a message called green flag or start game, start game. And then we can broadcast another one called play game. Play game. And then when this sprite receives green flag, green flag, we want it to play game. When it receives a start game, sorry, then we want it to hide and go to the front layer. I'm actually going to change this start game to set game because it's kind of confusing. So I'm going to just broadcast a new message called set game because it's a bit too confusing because play game and start game, you, you can get mixed up. 
So instead of start game, we're going to receive set game. So that's it for now for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in part two for the scrolling platformer.